Daria, what a lovely name. I love flowers. I think we'll get along just fine. These were the words my mother-in-law said to me when I met her for the first time. My husband and I went to visit his family before our marriage. My first impression of her was that she was really cheerful and friendly. She was younger than my own mother, so it felt more like having a slightly older sister than a mother-in-law. I was sure that we'd get along well in the future. I thought things like mother-in-law problems were just something you read on Reddit. But after getting married, I realized that the person from back then was just a facade. My name is Dahlia. I've been married to Jack for almost a year now. Right after we got married, we started living with his mother Judy at their family home. Initially, we had planned to remain at the apartment where we'd been living together. But Judy asked us to move in with her, citing her weakened strength and the comfort it would bring. Jack was unsure about the request at first. Living together all of a sudden might be tough for you. You'll probably not feel at home. I hadn't seen her true nature yet at that time. In my mind, she was just a large herded and caring mother-in-laws, so I had no concern. I'm worried about her too, so I don't mind at all. Jack remained skeptical about it, but I genuinely cared about her well-being. Besides, it wasn't just me. He was periodically worried about her too. So I accepted the idea, hoping it would reduce the burden on everyone. Looking back, my decision at that time was a mistake because I prioritized their feelings over my own. I had no idea that I'd end up experiencing what I did. It was about a week into our new living arrangement. Jack had told me before our marriage that he wanted children and preferred me to be a homemaker. So I started working part-time at a nearby supermarket and spent the rest of my days at home with Judy. Then she suddenly said, Listen, Dahlia, I'm entrusting you with all the household chores from now on. I was taken aback and asked, What do you mean? I mean, it's clear, isn't it? I'll let you marry my son, so it's only natural that you do all the housework. Your bottom job is basically not even work, so you can manage it, right? When we first started living together, we had agreed to divide the chores between us, and Jack had even offered to help on his days off. Well, we did talk about sharing them, didn't we? I mean, even though it's part-time, I'm working. In response, she glared at me and raised her voice. Don't talk back to me. I allowed my precious son to marry you. You need to at least listen to what I say. You're a terrible daughter-in-law. I was left speechless by her sudden outburst. I didn't see this hidden side of her coming. Her initial kindness was just a facade. I was more surprised than intimidated or upset and was frozen in place. What are you daydreaming about? I told you to handle the housework. Get on with it. Do the laundry or clean up already. She shooed me out of the living room. Honestly, I think I could have argued back if I wanted to. But it had only been a week since I got married, and I reassured Jack multiple times before we agreed to live together. So I couldn't muster up the courage to defy her since it was my choice. From that point on, her harassment toward me became more and more insidious. It started with just the occasional passive-aggressive comment like, Make sure to clean up! or have dinner ready before Jack comes home. 
when we were alone in the house. Around six months into our marriage, she began to escalate things. I can't eat this heavy, strong flavored food. Are you trying to kill me? She threw away the meal I had prepared. She was also never happy with the way I did the laundry, from how I washed it to how I folded it. She'd demand, Do it again! and made me rewash clothes I had just finished. It wasn't snide remarks or complaints anymore. It felt like she was just looking for any excuse to nitpick and criticize me. I wasn't even allowed to sit and relax for a moment. If I finished cleaning and tried to have a cup of coffee to take a break, she would immediately start berating me. Hey, what are you lounging around for? Why don't you polish some shoes or something? You're such a lazy girl. I might need to spread the word about this during the next church meeting. She threatened to spread rumors about me indirectly. In fact, she had already been talking quite negatively about me to people in the community. I often felt their disapproving glances and hushed conversations when I was out and about in the town. When I was cleaning the yard, Judy would make sure to speak loud enough for me to hear. Jeez, Daddy is so lazy. She won't do anything unless I tell her, and she can't even do it perfectly no matter how many times I instruct her. She's hopeless, you know. I wish I had a better daughter-in-law. I overheard her saying such things in a loud voice. She knew that I could hear her as she left the house when I started cleaning the yard, deliberately talking loudly to the neighbors and painting me as incompetent. One day, Jack had to go on a three-day business trip. Judy acted like a loving mother and never made a snide comments to me in front of him. In fact, she treated me kindly. Since he only saw her being nice to me, he thought our relationship was reasonably good. I'll be away for three days, but you and mom should be fine, right? You seem to get along well. If anything comes up, just give him a call. With that, he left for his trip. Objectively looking at it, you might wonder why I didn't just tell him about the harassment and leave. But I really loved him and despite Judith's behavior, she was his mother. It was a fact that he was concerned about her as she was getting weaker year by year. So I genuinely thought it was better for me to endure and stay together to alleviate his worries. That was why I kept quiet. I thought if I couldn't bear it any longer, I'd explain it to him. Until that day. The night Jack went on his business trip, Judy as usual told me to prepare dinner. When I started getting ready, I heard some commotion coming from the front door. I stopped what I was doing in the kitchen and peeked in that direction. To my surprise, Judy had brought a few friends back with her. Upon seeing me, she said, Oh, Delia, you insisted on treating my friends to your homemade meal, so I brought them all with me. Now, hurry up and get it ready. I never mentioned anything like that before. Besides, I had assumed it would be just the two of us for dinner, so I hadn't prepared enough food. Um, Judy, you never told me that you wanted to invite your friends over. What are you talking about? You said you want to treat them to your special cooking because Jack isn't here today, didn't you? That's why I brought them here. She said with a smug grin. Everyone, come on in. I'll have something ready for you in no time. She announced and ushered them into the living room where they began taking their seats. Even though she wanted me to have something ready, 
I couldn't whip up a proper meal on such short notice. There weren't even enough necessary ingredients. I don't have enough stuff, so I'll go shopping now. Upon hearing this, she glared at me. What are you saying now? Everyone's waiting. You've already prepared, right? Serve the meal now. That was just impossible. I thought the dinner was only for us as usual, so there was not enough food. Sorry. She sighed and exchanged glances with her friends. To think you'd embarrass me in front of everyone. Never mind, we'll just order some pizza. Then she called the restaurant for delivery. Of course, there was no pizza for me. In the end, she seems to enjoy the impromptu party until late at night. After everyone left, she demanded, You embarrass me in front of my friends. Pay for the pizza and wine. And with that, she demanded a total of $150 from me. I couldn't accept that and refused to pay. But the next day, the $200 that should have been in my wallet was gone. When I confronted her about it, she said, I settled for $200, so you should be grateful. I didn't get an apology from her, and she didn't show any signs of remorse. Instead, she left the house to go and talk bad about me at the church. Her attitude was finally too much for me to bear. I was determined to get revenge. I wanted to do something spectacular, so I got to work immediately. The next day, I decided to invite some of my friends in the neighborhood over for coffee and cake. I had always been fond of flowers and had my own garden in the backyard. This led me to interact with women of similar age at the church quite frequently. They had previously expressed an interest in seeing the garden I nurtured, so I invited them to come and see it. My garden was located just next to the patio, and I occasionally used it to entertain guests. If we stayed in the back, Judy wouldn't notice. So I put my plan into action. I was sure that she would put on an act and play the role of a good mother-in-law if she found out I had friends over. To show her true nature to a third party, it was crucial that she didn't know people were at the house. On the day of the operation, she had gone to a flower arranging class with her friends. In her absence, I enjoyed some quality time with my guests. They praised my flowers, we had delicious cake, and I had a pleasant time for the first time in a while. After a while, Judy returned home. I excused myself and went to greet her at the front entrance. I decided to play the role of a timid daughter-in-law. Hi Judy, how was your class? She made an obviously displeased face and said, I told you to polish the shoes every day, but you still haven't. You've been slacking off again. Well, I was a bit busy today. She sneered in response. Oh sure, you're always making excuses, neglecting housework, and can't even polish shoes. You fancy shoes are so dirty, so I threw them away for you. Threw them away? I hurried to check the shoe closet in the hallway. As dreaded, the pair Jack had brought me for me recently was missing. Seeing my reaction, she started cracking up. <laughs> you really didn't notice, huh? But you got what you deserved, you know. It's your fault for being a useless daughter-in-law. You don't do anything, you parasite. Then she grabbed a shoehorn that was nearby and began hitting me with it. Please stop it. I pleaded in tears. Shut up, you worthless woman. Get a divorce and get out. She was very dismissive. Then, in the next moment, someone chimed in. 
Oh my goodness, that's too crass. <laughs> that's her mother in law, right? If I had to deal with someone like that, I couldn't stand it. Huh? She hadn't even realized they were guests all along, and she looked bewildered as she stood there. They started leaving one by one, saying, See you later, Dahlia, and hang in there while heading out from the patio. In the end, I succeeded in exposing Judy's true nature to the people in our community. I never expected to be hit by a shoehorn, though. I'm sorry for this. I'll explain everything later. I apologized to them as they left. Judy remained completely frozen next to me. Soon after, the front door opened and Jack returned earlier than expected. What were you guys doing? While well, Judy was desperately trying to make excuses, I spoke plainly. Honey, I can't stay in this house anymore. Huh? My sudden statement left him stunned. Judy was glaring at me with intense hostility. I told him everything on the spot, occasionally adding some acting with tears. Actually, Judy has been bullying me all this time. The day you left for business trip, she ordered me to serve food to her friends without my consent, and I was shamed. And today, she even hit me in front of my friends with a shoehorn. Jack turned bright red, trembling with anger. What the heck? Are you kidding me? What do you think you're doing to my wife? He yelled at Judy. She probably didn't expect me to reveal everything to him right then and there. She just turned pale, had tears in her eyes, and remained silent without defending herself. Once we find a place, we are moving out immediately. Just stay away from us. He declared to cut ties with her. She frantically apologized him. I'm sorry, it's not what you think. I just felt sad because I felt like you were taken away from me. He had no patience for it and replied. Apologize to her before me. You really beyond redemption as a human being. I'm disgusted. That really knocked her down. From then on, she didn't try to talk to me until we moved out of the house. After about two weeks, we left and started our new life as a couple. Judy's actions have spread throughout the community due to my friends. It seems she became an outcast at the church and in the neighborhood. Now, she no longer has friends as before, and people are gossiping about her behind her back. When I heard about this from my friend, I told Jack. She brought it on herself. We don't have to be involved with her anymore, so don't worry about it. I'm a bit concerned about her, but I'm at peace to be living alone with Jack now. If she genuinely apologizes in the future, I might consider forgiving her. But for now, I want to enjoy our private time together.